24 hours later, we've got our finished panel all sealed up, and we've also managed to arrange for the sun to come out so that we can test it. And we're going to show you how you can calculate the power output of your panel uh, by taking two measurements, one for voltage and one for current. So, you can see that I have set up my multimeter here and I've got it attached to the terminals here. This is the positive terminal, that's the negative terminal. And we've got three wires coming off uh, for each terminal because we've been tabbing three wires up the front and back of each cell. And when it comes to connecting the panel to an output, we'll just be gathering those three wires together into one, twisting them together, or soldering them together, and treating them as one. Uh, but for the time being, I'm just going to take a reading across one of each three. It's the same thing as rolling them all together, basically. So, uh, I've already got it set up here so that we're measuring voltage on direct current. And we're showing a voltage of just under four and a half volts which is good because it means that each of these cells is producing over 0.5 of a volt because we've got eight cells, eight times 0.5 would be four. So the fact that we've got about four and a half means that the cells are going pretty much at their peak. And there's a few clouds just wafting across the sky. So you might see this jumping around a bit as the sunlight changes in intensity. In order to calculate the power of the panel, we need to take uh, a reading for current. So to do that, I just change this terminal from the volt socket over to the current socket and then switch this round until it's on 10 amps. And we can see here, for a start, that the ampage is going to be usually a lower, the ampage or current, is going to be a lower figure than for voltage. And it's also going to be much more sensitive to the sunlight. So as clouds come across the sun, you'll see the current change much more significantly than the voltage. So we're getting a reading of, well, it's going up now as the sun comes out, 3, 3.2, 3.3, 3.8, .3, around 4 amps for the whole panel. Now to calculate the power of the panel, you simply times the reading you have for the current times the reading you have for the voltage. So you've got about four and a half times four and a half. So we're going to be getting something around 18 watts because you measure the power output of the panel in terms of watts. So basically what you've got when you're measuring voltage and current is in the form of current you have a measure of how many electrons are running around the electrical circuit here. So if it was a river, it would be how much water there is in the river. And when you're measuring voltage, you're measuring basically how much energy each of those electrons is carrying through the circuit. So if you imagine that the electrons or the water molecules in the river gain the energy that you then use uh, in your output, from falling off a waterfall. When you're measuring current, you're measuring how big the river is. And when you're, when you're measuring voltage, you're measuring how high the waterfall is. And the higher the waterfall, the higher the potential difference or energy that the electrons are carrying around the circuit. And power is a measure of energy over time. So we measure energy in joules. Um, and so power is joules per second. So basically it's a dynamic measurement of how much work your panel is doing over time. So we know that this panel at peak is going to be producing maybe up to even 20 watts. So that would be enough to run uh, a low energy, low wattage light system. Although, as we said before, you're going to need more panels to get up to a 12 volt battery because our voltage reading is still only about four and a half volts. So the last thing we need to do is show how uh, these cells behave in a series circuit. So remember we said that when you connect things in series, you're summing the voltages, which is why each of these giving off around half a volt gives us four, four plus volts for the whole panel. But when you connect in series, you're effectively averaging the current output of each cell. So that means that 
the current output of the whole panel is going to be contingent on each cell producing a current output similar to each of the cells around it. So now we're looking here at about 4.8 amps for the whole panel. If I cover up just one of these cells, we're going to see this figure drop right down because as the ampage output from one cell drops, it drags all the others down with it. So if I do that, we can see that I've almost halved the ampage output for the whole panel by just covering up one cell. If I take that away, it jumps back up to nearly five. And if it wasn't a sunny day, by covering up one of those cells, I could almost take out the entire panel. I could reduce the current to almost zero. But because it's a sunny day, it's dealing quite well with the fact that I'm covering up one like that. So if I change it to volts, which I've just done, uh, we can see that we get reading about 4.5 again. And now, if I cover that up, it drops down by 0.03 of a volt. Cover that up as well, another point. 0.3. So it makes very little difference if I cover up just one cell.